Hey everybody, welcome back to Texas Prepper Projects. Uh, this is a follow-up video to my sand battery video, which blew up way beyond my expectations. I'm, I'm just so amazed. I've got 70,000 views in climbing, and there have been some really great comments. There have been 400 comments on the video, and I wanted to take some time to address some of those comments. There were some good ideas and some thoughts and some things that came up over and over and over again. So I wanted to go ahead and uh, answer some of those. I've been trying to reply down in the comments, but I figured I would just make a recap video. Um, and this will lead into uh, version two, which is coming soon. I've had a really busy couple of weeks at work and some personal stuff, so I'm trying. I want to address something up front before I uh, get into responding to the most uh, common comments. The purpose of this sand battery that I made, the theory was that I could heat it up and use it to, I could heat it up during the day when the sun is out and then it would radiate heat at night for a room probably not even a room, maybe a tent inside of a room. I'm looking at this in the context of another week-long winter blizzard like we had here in Texas a couple of years ago. We had plenty of sunlight, so solar would have worked, but we didn't have heat. I have a Mr. Buddy propane heater that I know will be better and they're about $100 and propane is not tremendously expensive. So um, a buddy heater would work better and would be less expensive, but I just wanted to see if there was another viable option. Um, also, you know, I do trust buddy heaters, but the fact of the matter is they are hot and they do consume O2. So if I could have a hot bucket of sand that I could put inside of my tent, inside of my bedroom to trap heat, and that sand could radiate the same amount of heat as a buddy heater on low and do that in a renewable, non-toxic, non-flammable way that doesn't consume propane and doesn't create CO2, there, I think that is a win. So there are comments about, will this heat my house? Absolutely not. Will this heat a bedroom? Probably not. So look at it in the context of me trying to use this essentially to replace a Mr. Buddy heater on low so I don't have to consume propane and I don't have to worry about fire hazards and I don't have to worry about CO2 or carbon, uh, low oxygen issues, which the Buddy has a heat on. Uh, a low O2 cutoff meter, but this would illuminate all that. If I could just have a big bucket of sand radiating, it would eliminate kind of all of those issues. So put that in the context of what I was attempting to do with this. I want to add one of my other parameters to this project and to uh, my version two. One of the other reasons why I'm not using um, parabolic mirrors or hot water heaters is I'm trying to make this out of common parts and using relatively common tools and relatively common techniques. I have a welder, not everyone does. I don't have a plasma cutter, lots of people don't. So I'm trying to keep this inside the realm of possibility that anybody who has access to a Home Depot and Craigslist could make this. You need solar panels, concrete, trash can, bucket of sand. You know, not everyone can get to a junkyard and buy a hot water heater. Not everyone has access to a parabolic mirror. Funny enough, for you who are watching this, half of the viewers of Sand Battery Video are not in the United States. That's amazing to me. That is absolutely amazing to me. If you're watching this, list your country down below in the comments. There's viewers from like 50 different countries. It's great. Hey, everybody. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm amazed to see everyone. So put your country down in the comments. It, it's, it's just stunning to me. So I'm trying to keep the, the, the materials that I use fairly common, something that you could get kind of anywhere and, and tempting to not use exotic stuff. Because as this works or doesn't work or it, I spark ideas, I want everyone in the world to be able to get out 
and create what I've created and experiment and make it better and then make your own video and share it with all of us and show how we can make this better and see if it's viable for emergency purposes. So, uh, yeah, this is really neat and fun, exciting stuff. Science is fun, right? So. Okay, number one question, comment, etc., is why didn't I just drill a hole in the pot and put the water heater through the side of the pot like in a traditional hot water heater? Well, there's a couple of really good question, uh, answers for that. Number one, I don't have a drill bit big enough in diameter uh, to, the thing is like a an inch and three quarter, and I don't have a drill bit big enough. Number two, the circumference of the pot is curved in such a way, it's fairly steep, and the hot water heater element, the threads on it were only like a half an inch long, because I looked at it and I really considered drilling into it, but that uh, that electric element the threads w aren't long enough that if i would have drilled through it i would have had anything to grab onto and the electric element didn't come with a nut to go on the other side remember that unit that i used was a factory replacement for an existing hot water heater that already has threads on it so there's really no way the threads aren't long enough and there's no nut on the other side so even if i drilled a hole in the pot there's really no way i could have gotten it in there um and the real reality is i didn't want to destroy the pot because i'm going to use it for other things that's the long and the short answer. That was the, kind of the final straw is that I didn't want to destroy the pot because I'm planning on using it for other stuff eventually. And it's really thick and it's really heavy and very expensive when I've looked at comparable. So I didn't want to mess it up. Okay. Uh, the other, one of the other big comments that I get a lot is why don't I buy an old, or go to a junkyard and buy a scrap hot water heater uh, to... Uh, to turn into a vessel. Well, number one, they're expensive. Uh, number two, I don't know where a junkyard is around here. Number three, I drive a Honda Fit, so there's not enough room in the back of my car for me to be able to put this thing in it to get it home. I'm also not a particularly strong guy, and neither is, my wife is not particularly strong, so we couldn't pick this thing up. And also, I don't know what I would do with it when I was done. It would just clutter up my garage. So it, it, that suggestion came a couple times. It just really isn't kind of feasible for me. One of the other big comments or suggestions was to use the heating element from an electric stove. I actually found some on Amazon and bought them, and I am using them for version 2. One of the problems that I have noted in my comments post is that the ohm rating of the electric uh, uh, stove element is higher, so I'm not getting as much current and I'm not getting as much wattage. So I bought a second one, and I think I'm gonna put them vertically in the sand battery, you know, kind of pushing against each other, pushing inwards, as opposed to stacking them like this. I think I'm gonna go this way with it. So uh, obviously the, hot, the water heater element did not hold up, which a lot of people, assumed that it wouldn't and i have video showing that no it didn't so i did buy a stove element and we'll see how that one holds up in version two um lots and lots and lots of comments about the melted wires yes i didn't realize that the wires were melted until i pulled the sand out um, so what i have done is for version two i have bought silicon coated or silicon jacketed 16 gauge that's supposed to go up to I think 200 degrees Celsius, which is like 400 degrees Fahrenheit thereabouts. So high temp wire, hopefully that will hold up better for version two. I'll put some links to it either on this video or in the version two video as to what I'm using. So hopefully that will hold up better. I got this question a whole lot. How do you hook this thing up to solar? Well, I'm doing the, the build mostly at night and in my garage. And so I'm using a power supply to simulate solar, right? So I have a 28 amp power, uh, 28 volt, 20 amp power supply. And then I've hooked that up 
to a step up converter that then pushes that up to 60 volts or 64 volts at you know 10 5 or 10 amps or so and that is the and that is the equivalent of my two solar panels so i have these solar panels that are 35 volts each and put them two together that 70 volts at five amps a piece so i've got 70 volts at five amps so my power supply with the step up is 64 volts at five amps so i'm using an ac power supply to simulate the solar panels that i can't use because it's dark and it's also been cloudy and rainy here for quite a while okay and i will hook it up um, with anderson power poles i don't really like them but that's what all my connections are so I'm gonna put an Anderson power pole and then convert that to an MC4 connector and hook it up to my solar panels when I go full scale. Why don't I put pipes or other metal uh, inside the sand and go through a heat exchanger or blow hot air through the sand? I thought about that, but heat is heat is heat. So like the Desert Sun O2 has videos of the thermoelectric Peltier fans that go on the bucket of sand and run off of the heat of, of uh, the heat of the stove and it runs the fan and it blows the hot air out. Okay, that moves the air, but that doesn't make it any hotter. So you're not having any sort of net gain. I am using that concept in version two, so you're just gonna have to stay tuned to when I release that. Um, I am gonna try to blow the air through the hot sand, through some hot metal, but I think I've got a better way to do it where I'm actually gonna recirculate the air as opposed to just moving the air. So. I got some ideas, stay tuned on it. I'm gonna integrate some of these thoughts into version two. Why don't I paint it black and put it in the sun? Well, that's a really interesting idea. Um, it's been very cloudy here in Texas for the last four weeks since I built this, but I am intrigued by that idea as to how much net gain I can get from it by just parking it outside. Um, so we'll see. I don't know what will happen. We'll give it a shot at some point. Um, multiple people said use a parabolic magnifying glass like Archimedes Death Ray from Mythbusters to heat up the sand. Um, I don't know where to get those. Um, I don't really want to rip apart an old tube projection TV to get them. And that also just seems like a big fire hazard. Um, I know other people have toyed around with that. I've seen some other videos. The other problem with that is since the sun moves constantly, you're going to have to stand out there and adjust that, that mirror or that magnifying glass like every 15 minutes as the sun moves. And I've got better things to do than to be tilting that thing every 15 minutes. With the solar panels, I just put them at 45 degrees and aim them at due south. And I'm going to get peak sunlight for five or six hours and just generate the electricity that way. What about using water versus using sand? So I am not a mechanical engineer and I have seen a lot of people post really good calculations about BTUs to watts and such, and I'm reading all of them and I really appreciate those things. So that's some interesting ideas that I just don't have the engineering background to sort out. The reason why I went sand instead of water is because of the video that inspired me where the guy pointed out that you can heat sand up to multiple hundreds of degrees, whereas water taps out at 200 degrees Fahrenheit and then it turns to steam. Whereas I obviously got in my bucket of sand up to 500 degrees and higher. So the heat capacity of water might be higher, but the temperature delta I can get from sand is greater. And also, if I was using water, then I would have electrocution and shock issues with my heating probe element. Um, so it's an interesting idea that someone much smarter than me would really have to do the math on. But I think that 
if I can continue to get the sand to four or 500 degrees, the delta is so much greater than water, plus the logistical challenges of using water and keeping things waterproof and making sure that I don't have electrical shorts. I think at this scale um, it is just kind of too much for me to sort of deal with. Sterling engines. I've got this comment a couple of times. Let me put a Sterling engine engine on it and create free electricity. So I love the concept of Sterling engines. Um, I've watched several videos on them. I think they're fascinating. I think they would change the world if someone could build one. Um, but the only ones I've ever seen are little demo models that are this big that you use like in a high school chemistry class or physics class to show how nifty they are. If anybody out there in the big wide world of YouTube knows where I can purchase a commercially available Sterling engine that is bigger than this that I could put on top of a bucket of sand and get a, a DC output to create electricity, please link it. And I don't mean that to be rude. I want to see it. I really want to know. I would really like to see a commercially viable thing that I could put in my credit card and buy and bring it in and create electricity with it. I've never found one. I've never seen one. I just see tabletop demo models. So if you know one out there, I want to know. Send it to me and I'll, I'll, I'll play with it. I would really like to. But they seem to be vaporware. They're, they're these theoretical things that look great on paper and small little desk demo models. But where do I get one? Where, where do I buy one from? <laughs> So I appreciate everyone who took the time to uh, like and subscribe and make a comment and send me an email. It's been really amazing. And I promise you version two is coming. I've had a really busy week, couple of weeks in my personal life. I'm almost there. I'm, I'm trying. So we'll see what my improvements are. Um, I think I will uh, drop you a couple of little teasers as to what I'm working on. So it's coming soon. So thanks everybody. Thanks for being here and uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and share. I appreciate it. Thank you. So my crucible is good and rock solid today and it's time to work on the lid. So here we go. Here's the lid. We've got my two fittings for a uh, four inch dryer vent and I've got a 120 millimeter case fan uh, or underneath one of them. Now, I specifically picked a very low airflow fan. This is like 35 cubic feet per minute and only draws like 200 milliamps. So I don't need a whole lot, but I just want to help kind of push the air through a little bit. All right, let's see what happens next. <laughs> 